Growing up, I lived a normal childhood. I had my mom and my dad at home. Mom stayed home and took care of my sister and I. My dad worked full time to provide for our family. Um, I always felt as I grew up that something in my life was missing, but didn't quite know what that was. I always just felt there was some sort of a void in my life. And I had asked my mom one day, um, after looking at features that I had that nobody else in my family seemed to have, um, asked her if my dad was really my father. The answer was no, he wasn't my biological father. Um, when my mom found out she was pregnant with me at the age of 16, uh, he had left and moved down to Florida, um, and I had never known about him. Um, so I wrote a letter and sent him a letter. Uh, he came to visit, we got to know each other, I also found out at that time that he was an alcoholic and an addict. So we drove down to Pittsburgh and went to the clinic in Pittsburgh. And I remember the entire time driving down there knowing it wasn't something I wanted to do. But at the age of 16, I knew it was something I had no choice. Um, I remember them calling my name, and we went back into the room, and I had second thoughts. I walked out of the room and went back into the waiting room looking for my mom and everybody that had gone down there with me, and there was nobody there didn't have a choice but to go back into the building and have the procedure done. Um, next thing I know, I woke up feeling empty all over again. Uh, my parents weren't too happy about it. I was 18 and he was about to turn 21. Um, he also had been married and divorced, uh, just got out of the military and also had a two-year-old child. Um, Tyler I saw as the child that I had to give up. He was the same age that my child would have been that I had to, to terminate and felt that I was being given that second chance. The year after we got married, I slipped and fell on the ice. I had uh, broken two vertebrae and fractured my right hip. Uh, at that point is when I had been prescribed pain medication for the first time. It made me tired, it made me uh, feel different and weird, so I didn't care for that. Uh, but over time, the pain was too much that you know I needed to take them, and before I knew it, I started taking more and more. I was home a lot with the kids, and my husband worked a lot of hours. So the pills kind of masked all of it. I felt like I could accomplish anything. I thought I was super mom. Little did I know, I, I was just a mess. Everything I had been through, I, I just wasn't in the mind frame of going to church. I had long felt that God had given up on me for the things that I had gone through, things I had done. As I pulled into the parking lot, I see all the people, uh, and as I walk through the door, the lady at the door is bubbly and happy just to open the door, and I couldn't understand why. So I immediately made a beeline to the coffee. And as I'm getting my coffee, this guy walks up and, and says hi to me and, and is so happy that I'm there and, and it really took me by surprise. It wasn't something I was expecting. And then we go into the auditorium and we sit down and I see the lights and speakers everywhere and drums and, and it was nothing like any church I had ever been to. So I wasn't quite sure what I had gotten myself into at that point. So as the service began, uh, they start singing a song uh, called Oceans. It was a song I'd never heard before, but the lyrics really spoke to me and to my soul. Um, I 
cried throughout the entire song uh, and I'm in my act of addiction at this point so every last lyric of that song you know spoke to me um, once the song had ended and we'd sat down um, the guy from the coffee table walked out onto the stage and it was at that point that I realized he was the pastor of this church um, he then preached about the Bible in ways that I had never heard before um, and I left the that day feeling hopeful about my life and feeling full again. So it was that same year for the Christmas service that I had returned with my family. And during that service, one of the worship leaders on the team had shared her story about addiction and recovery. Uh, it was after that service that I had spoke with her and she had shared her story a little more in depth with me and prayed over me. and. At that point, I knew it was my time to, to get help and treatment, and not long after that, I was on my way to recovery myself. It felt really great to be able to serve my church and to serve the people of this church. I felt like I had purpose in my life again. On October 13th of 2018, not only did I celebrate five years of sobriety, but I was also baptized as well. So after years of feeling worthless, angry, frustrated, like I wouldn't amount to anything, I am now a leader on our production team and I have a front row seat to watch life change just like mine every single weekend. Hey Sarah. Hey Sarah. So listen, we know you guys have been going through quite a lot lately. And so on behalf of the church, we wanted to get you a gift card and say thank you so much for all that you've done for us. And so I knew you, you know, we've been kind of poking and prodding about appliances and things that you need. And so we decided just to get you a, a gift card. So here's a thousand bucks to Lowe's. So it will help get anything that you guys need. So we want to give that to you. Thank and say thank yes. you so much yes. for all that you. you've done for us. Thank you so we much. We love you, Sarah. Thank you, guys. Yes. yes. So we appreciate you so much. Our boiler went. And if, if that was all, if that was all we got you, that would be awesome. But that's not all we got you. And so in addition to that, what the right heck? here, is for you. Oh my God! Oh, no! This car. Oh, <laughs> because you, oh, God, you desperately need it, and we couldn't help but do it for you. So. Oh, that's too much. That's all for you. Oh my God.